Alrighty hosses, welcome back and in this video I'm going to show you how to use some of the default text styling that's built right in the bootstrap. Now actually I'll write all of them and I'll just stick them all on one page so then when you go to my github page you can just copy whatever you want and I don't know I think it'll be easier than breaking them down into a bunch of files but the first one I want to show you guys is highlighting so I'll say you can highlight words or text using the mark tags. Now anytime you want to highlight a certain chunk of text then you just use this element right here mark. So mark mark and I hate when it does that. It auto completes when I don't want it to auto complete and whenever I do it doesn't pop up. Now this actually might be a little hard to see since it's gonna highlight it in yellow let me run this and check it out. So I don't know if you guys can see this on YouTube, but this chunk right here it has a yellow tint. If you can't, then trust me, it's a lot easier to see whenever you're looking at it in person. So that's highlighting. Another cool thing is using quotes. So if I use block quote, inside here, say that we were quoting someone Y, such as my grandpa. So my grandpa said, Sometimes I wet the bed on purpose. He did tell me that. I'm not lying. And for the footer, we can just, you know, quote him or attribute him. So my grandpa. So now whenever you run this, so this gives us the appearance of a quote by adding a little indentation and also this line on the left and also the size and coloring in this little dash. It did it all for us, made it super easy. Now, another thing that I use a lot is a list. So, let me give it a header actually. What can we make a list of? Maybe things to do when you're bored. Let me actually give myself a little bit more space. I'd like to be able to scroll a little bit. All right, so what are we gonna do when we're bored? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a list, DL. Now, I actually break this up into indoors and outdoors, so what can you do indoors? Well, let me indent this. Well, the first thing that you can do is take a nap, you know. Don't want to put too much effort in this. You definitely don't want to work or do anything productive. And what else can you do when you're bored inside? Watch Netflix for eight hours. By the way, Orange is the New Black came out on Netflix today, season number three. So, you know, goodbye weekend. That's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> All right. Now, let me just add a one more list in, uh, I'll say, outdoors. I'll show you guys how cool this looks. So, DD, what can you do when you're bored and you're outdoors? You can go back inside because you shouldn't be outdoors doing any physical activity. You should be inside playing on the computer. And this is what a list looks like. Pretty sweet. Check it out. All right. Now, let's see what else we got. Whenever you're doing code, for example, you want to do some syntax highlighting. Um, I don't know, maybe you're trying to make the next big GitHub or maybe you're making some documentation for an API. You have a couple different options that you can do. So I'll say that, um, I'll say I was writing some documentation for a tutorial. To set the user's weight, uh, use set user weight, uh, what's my weight? 374 pounds and I'll say with an integer. All right, so whenever you're gonna use code, then what you should do is you should use the code tags right there. Now if I just highlight this and drag the code you wanna highlight in and run it, this is what you get. And I know you've seen these on a bunch of different sites before. Let me actually add a semicolon to that. I don't know why, it just bothered me. So the default code styling is this light pink background and it uses monospace font and the text is like dark pink. But whenever someone sees this, they realize that this is source code. So that's one option that you can use. Now, another thing I want to point out is this. The code tags, 
they aren't really good for multi-line code so if you ever have more than one line or like more than you know a little chunk of text then you probably want to use the pre tags so let me just say multi line code use the pre tags all right so inside here what can hold on my freaking cord for my headphones like get all tangled up in me so for n in range 101 I'll just write some python real quick then um uh, I don't know what condition can we make if n modulus 4 is 0 then we'll just do like print n and this code doesn't mean anything at all and you don't need semicolons in python so check it out so as you can see we have some pre-formatted text and the reason that this is spaced so far to the left is because this is spaced so far to the left and it just reads it directly but if you highlight it all and if you hold shift and tab I don't know if you guys knew this but that means reverse tab or take away the tabs so you know that's not a real you know bootstrap related bit of information but it's pretty handy so again this is much easier to read than this right here so for a little snippet use the code tags for multi-line code use the pre tags and this stands for pre formatted text now one other thing I want to mention that is kind of code related there is another thing that you're gonna see and it's called KBD this stands for keyboard input now I really don't like this because I think it just looks stupid but this is supposed to be keyboard input so for example if you are saying like giving instructions to a user and they're supposed to do something like hold down control alt delete then you can stick them inside the KBD tag so control plus alt plus delete or some kind of code or whatever now if you run this then it kind of looks like the code tags in the sense that it's monospace code but I don't know I don't really see this that often apparently a black background and white text is supposed to resemble keyboard input for some reason you can just use the code tags that's probably what I would do but you know follow your heart now the last couple of things I want to mention are this two little elements whenever you use bootstrap it comes with predefined contextual colors now these are just colors that are used for let's say whenever the user does something correctly like fills out a form then we probably want to show green text since green resembles success and whenever they mess something up or you give them an error then we're gonna have some red text now instead of just going out and picking these colors bootstrap already included the standard colors for you so let me just add a quick heading so it might look make it look a little bit easier so I'll say uh, built-in color classes and whenever I stick this on my github page I'll add comments and make everything a little bit prettier so everything isn't jumbled together but for now I just wanna you know show you guys some real quick examples so the class for one of these is let's say that show you guys a bunch of different ones so text muted is think of it like disabled or like not clickable and I'll just say uh, text muted and this is just gonna be a light gray so the default text is black or very close to black this is gonna be grayed out text and I'll show you guys two other ones even though that there are a couple more so success I'll say like um congrats you filled out that form correctly and one other one is text minus danger and this is gonna be red and we'll just say like a uh, uh, danger text we'll keep it real boring now if I run this check it out so without setting any colors manually you see that alright that class is grayed this one the success one is green and this is red so that way we can keep these classes on every single page without having to include 
you know, any custom CSS classes. And also, these classes, they're the same for the background colors too. So, in order to get a background color of, let's say, green or red, all we do instead of text is we change this to BG. So, BG success means a green background, BG danger means a red background, and check it out. So, all right, so I guess it wasn't, you know, red, it was a little bit pink, but that is what it does. So, again, there are some very common text styles, in other words, topography, as some people say, and there's a lot of other text classes and different things that you can do, but now that we know the basics of it, it's time to move on to something else, and that would be tables. That's what we're going to be talking about in the next video. I'll see you then.